Welcome back, friends. Good to have you all back. Today we're going to take uh, this scene not far from my home in Montana, and we're going to make a painting out of it, with instruction all the way through. So let's get started. I took this photograph back in uh, 2011 in the springtime. This is in the Beartooth Mountains up above Red Lodge, Montana. I liked the contrast of the real bright snow and the darker water. But as a painting, I didn't think that that log across the um, water or across the creek is helpful. And also those trees in the background, I didn't think showed enough depth to make a decent painting. So using a digital program called Krita, I painted out the tree and painted in more creek uh, in the background. And I also painted in a little bit more blue in the background to push it off farther in the distance. You can see the differences here as I switch back and forth. I also thought that there was just a few more, or a few too many rocks in the foreground, so I painted some of those out. So now let's make a real painting out of it. I put this uh, quick sketch in with insoluble ink just to get an idea of where the colors need to go. Early on in my career, I trained myself to use a limited palette. I rarely use any more than these seven colors. With these seven colors, I can make just about any color I need to make any kind of painting. And I always try to use the same location of color on my palette. Lemon yellow, light red, burnt umber, Payne's gray, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and raw sienna. Of course, white always, but I don't consider that a color. Payne's gray and lemon yellow makes a great green. I'll use Payne's gray and alizarin crimson for all of my darks. And some ultramarine blue and white. The rest of these colors I'll mix right on the canvas. I'll start off with a, a material called uh, liquin. It's a medium and I'll just use it in just the very top of the painting. This thins down the paint uh, quite a bit and it helps. It's really helpful for distant colors. Liquin also helps speed up the drying process. Now the colors that I put on top of this first coat uh, will look farther off in the distance. Now, full strength with this pre-mixed green color. The closer things get, the more yellow I'll add to this green color. And I'll let, um, put more Payne's Gray in it in the deeper shadows. Now a little white and a little raw sienna warms up that green a little bit more. This lighter, warmer green uh, indicates a flatter surface. The way light reflects off from things, vertical surfaces are always darker than flat horizontal surfaces. Light blue always works very well for shadows in snow. For the darkest darks, I always use this mixture of Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson, about 50-50. It may look like black to you, but if I tried to use straight black, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Even straight Payne's Gray uh, is way too dull. As those darks come closer, you'll see that I'll start to mix some raw sienna in that uh, dark. Now you can see as I mix white in with that uh, dark color and a little burnt umber, they uh, harmonize well together. Now for the trees on the right, you can see I'm using almost pure white, but it mixes with the paint already on the canvas, and so they meld together, if you will. I always try to mix the direct colors right on the canvas whenever possible. 
I'm using a lot of blue here to, to just block in the colors of the rocks uh, in the foreground. These lighter rocks in the high country actually just reflect the color of the sky very much like snow. And again, that straight dark violet for the deep shadows. I'm warming up these rocks in the foreground here, the very foreground, but I'm not quite convinced I'm going to keep them there. I'm thinking they're not really helping the design. We'll get a better idea as the uh, picture develops. For the rocks on the left, I'll, I'll add just a little more violet, just to distinguish between the snow and the rocks. I won't be making the foreground in this painting as dark as it is in the original photograph. I've ended up with a, a little too dark color in the snow here. Nothing that a good old palette knife won't fix. Pure white on top of that, as you can see, that just the color just melds together. Now I'm just using a clean brush to just kind of soften up some of the colors in the background. Then the darker colors that I put over the top of that will be a little softer. And now for the water, I'll just start using all the colors that I've already used so far because water reflects all the colors around it. And when it's moving, it will uh, reflect all kinds of different colors and they're mixed together, if you will. We don't wanna mix them together entirely because then it would just look like mud. Just streaks here and there of all the surrounding colors of the river. Put raw sienna there just to start out with, but that color really needs a little more green in it, as you'll see as it develops. As I'm sure you've seen from my other videos that many times I'll kind of smooth these colors together and uh, mold them together with a palette knife. But today I'll just be using the brush. That was burnt umber uh, for that texture on top of the snow. Just touches here and there, right on top of the uh, color that was already there. Makes it look a little lighter. Just real quick strokes for the trees right now. Just uh, straight white. But as you can see, it mixes in with the colors around it. I find it's helpful to move around in different areas of the painting and not spend too much time just trying to get too much detail in one area. I like to let the painting develop before I get into any detail. Now I'm mixing a little white and yellow together in with that uh, distant water. And then a tiny bit of burnt umber. Notice, however, though, that they're not mixed into just one muddy color. This uh, indicates the, the waviness of the water. You see how that green color there just really adds to the water? It's reflecting the colors around it. As the water bends just before it drops over that little waterfall, it will almost always reflect the color of the sky. And then underneath that, the color of the moss and rocks before it turns white. For the water pouring down the rocks, you'll see I mixed together right on the brush, uh, a little dark, uh, the violet and white together. And just make one quick stroke. Now for just some touches of uh, burnt umber, just touches here and there for that gnarly bank on the right. Now I wanna Clean off my brush really well before I start back into the water here. And you'll see me putting the brush into several uh, pure color and to have them all just uh, on the brush without mixing them together. I'll do that on the canvas. And this is mostly uh, raw sienna here and that uh, dark violet color that uh, we mixed up earlier. A little bit more white in that uh, violet mixture. Long, quick strokes like this just eventually uh, melds them all together.
again you can see the effectiveness of the green when the greens added in there it just adds so much to it and a little stroke here and there with a with a clean brush uh, helps at this point and now we can start mixing up some color on top of the color that's already there even more so up in the trees on the right this is where that dark violet color color comes in really effective on top of the green and in the uh, the bank underneath the trees there you'll see me putting almost every color on the palette again mixing them right on the palette or excuse me right on the painting not the palette you see the way that blue color around that middle tree just uh, it, it's not there in, in the painting but it just adds something to the painting it's not there in the photograph I meant to say now I hope you can see how all these colors are just kind of mixing together but we don't want to scrub them together just uh, mixing them. this is where you can just go to town just use any color on your palette I'm just feeling like the uh, the snow on the left here the color is just getting too muddy so a uh, little clean off with the palette knife uh, is very effective. Now for some of these shadows in, uh, in the distant uh, trees again, you can start to see I'm using this same violet color that we mixed up to start out with, but on top of the light blue color, it, uh, it's softer. And again here, you can see me taking quite a few different colors from my palette, a little green, a little white, Now for the shadows in those distant trees, I'm using again that same violet color, but when I put it over the green, it looks very dark green. Just quick strokes for those two tree trunks in the distance very fast one almost paint straight off the palette of that uh, violet mixture and then just to put a little white in it for the tree next to that one no detail just very suggestive all those we need is just little touches here and there to indicate those dark shadows in the background no need to add a bunch of detail back there Now, if you look down on the palette there uh, in the lower right hand corner, you can see me mixing up a lot of yellow into this green mixture. This will indicate some of the branches there in those pine trees that have a lot of sun on them. Now I've slowed down here a little bit on uh, close up on the palette here and you can see when I mix the white in with this uh, green shade. So now you can see on my palette I've got several shades of green here from that original mixture. And this white and the green here, it, it makes that little tree 
a little bit there just really pop when we put that little uh, mix of white color in with that same green mixture also to to make this tree even pop more which i may do is to put the dark around it as you can see from the uh, photograph there now as you can see if i take a, a little bit of this white just touch it off here and there in that uh, flatter ground there as you can see this just indicates just a little bit of snow patches here and there and again, it mixes in with the color that's already there. So it's not pure white. Now, as I indicate all these little branches, these gnarly little branches coming off from this uh, third tree from the right, if I were to try to paint every single one of those little branches in there, it would just be chaos. So we just have to indicate them with a, right now with a slight, just a violet, a slight violet color, very mixed with that uh, dark violet color and some white. And you'll see uh, later on how uh, I indicate this. As you can see, I've decided to uh, do a little something different here with the trees. And uh, first of all, I've, I've taken out this leaning middle tree. You'll see what I do there in just a little bit. I've mixed some white in with this uh, dark violet. And I load up the brush pretty heavily. And then I mix a uh, pure white in there with that uh, lighter violet color. And again, make some quick strokes right over the top of all these other colors. Nice thick paint. I've decided that having all these trees, all of them, all across there, all leaning in one direction was annoying. So this tree here is one of the first ones that I end up, uh, I think I'm gonna end up fixing all these a little differently. And when I'm making some of these shadow areas in this mixture of this gnarly bank over here on the right, you'll just notice there that I just put pure alizarin crimson in some of these little spots here. Keeps everything interesting and then along with that just spots of pure burnt umber And now I have to mix up a little bit more color, some more violet color with the uh, alizarin crimson Payne's gray 50-50 mixture for the darks. And I had to clean off a little area of the white there so I can get some pure white back on the canvas, or palette, I mean. And a little uh, raw sienna back there, and just to indicate a few of those uh, winter weeds that, that lo have lost their color. Just splotches of color here and there around the, the trees on the left. It, it just indicates weeds. That's all we want is an indication. And now I'm switching to uh, a smaller brush. Uh, to just get a little bit of detail here and there. To keep them getting real fussy, I try to use the biggest brush I can. Uh, but this is a small painting. So in, in, uh, relatively, this is still a pretty big brush. Thank you. 
I've gotten this, uh, this bushy area just a little bit too close to the edge of the bank, but uh, it's easy to fix with a pallet knife. A little light blue and voila, snow. The blue mixed with a tiny bit of uh, burnt umber makes a grayish color and I've kind of grayed down some of this bluish color. So it's kind of a blue gray for the rocks on the left here. And that straight uh, violet mixture, dark violet right, right off the palette there uh, for some of these dark crevice areas. And now you see me mixing up some real gray color by uh, adding the uh, burnt umber and blue together, which is this light blue color, which is actually ultramarine blue. And ultramarine blue and burnt umber makes a good cool gray, or actually warm gray, I should say. <clears throat> and now I'm, I'm adding a, just a little bit of yellow, just the slightest little bit of yellow on that snow, and that just indicates places for the sun shining on the snow. And all these uh, dark crevice areas uh, around the rocks, uh, they'll, they'll all have to be softened up a little bit. They're, they're a little bit, the edges are too smooth and they're a little bit too dark. So you'll see here, I'll have to soften those up just a little bit. I'll do that sometimes with a little warmer color, like uh, some raw sienna. And I might have to do a little scraping and mixing it in uh, with just white. And here you can see I've uh, I painted over those rocks in the very foreground. Uh, it, it, this just opens up the water a little bit more, opens up the whole painting. I felt that those rocks there were just blocking the viewer's eye from entering the uh, photograph or entering the painting. Uh, for this rock right in the middle of the snow on the left, it, uh, the the paint there is getting so thick that it is hard to add any detail. So. Uh, to just scrape it off, it's just real easy. Just move, remove some of the paint so we can add some detail there. But again, not much. Notice there what just a little touch does for just a tiny, the rocks, a tiny little rocks there in the, uh, the rocks on the left. All it needs is on top of that uh, wet paint, just a tiny touch and a little tiny bit of movement.
you'll see a variety of uh, all kinds of colors in these uh, rocks on the foreground on the right. Uh, in the shadows, you'll see some reds or some, some deep crimson color. The important thing here on, in the foreground is that I would like to show more painterly strokes, solid, colorful strokes of the brush. Notice there that that solid stroke right along top of that rock. It's not in the photograph, but I think it just adds to the painterly quality of the oil painting. Again, a little palette knife kind of uh, removes some of the really thick paint there so I can add a little darker color on that rock. Little touches here, uh, here and there just uh, really add to the texture of the, uh, the rocks there in the foreground. Now I'm going to turn my attention back to these trees here because, again, I thought that, that all of them leaning the same way was annoying. Still, too much lean on all these trees, so here we go. See how easy that is? Just put some, a lot of paint on the brush, make some quick strokes. Mixing in with the, all the other paint that there just uh, adds form to, to the uh, tree itself, the trunk. Notice as we have a little close-up of the trees here, again on the right, the, the red that's in there in between the first uh, two trees there. And it's not there 
in, in the photograph, but red is red and green are completely opposite on the color wheel and they add just a little interest, a little contrast. And that was light red I used for that color there. Uh, those uh, bluish colors uh, in the shadow there just kind of brings a little life to that area. Some final touches just here and there in the water. Kind of uh, well, just a little bit more detail, but uh, not much. Just, uh, just a tiny touch here and there is, is helpful at times. on that little waterfall here just uh, touches a blue light blue and then touches a pure white right on top of the color that's there and yeah, it indicates the foam from the uh, fall of the water there over the rocks Again, just a few touches on the trees there. I indicate uh, some of the marks on the trees. Now, scraping with a palette knife on an oil painting is uh, something that's not commonly done, but I felt that it was uh, very effective here to indicate these uh, little tiny bare uh, branches on these trees. Like I've said in, in many of my paintings, uh, all these a la prima paintings that uh, have pure wet paint on them from start to finish. It's an effective way to indicate branches. It can be overdone. So you have to be careful here, but I felt that it was pretty effective in this uh, instance. And uh, all the little tiny branches here, you can see that uh, I'm, not, I'm not drawing all of them. I'm not uh, putting all of them in, but it, it, see that just helps us with all these gnarly little branches on the, on the trees here. And then it'll work the same here for uh, down in the roots, uh, the roots coming out of the trees on that gnarly bank. Very effective in all these areas here. Now in between these roots on this gnarly bank here, you can see this is, you, you, you really can't see um, where I got that paint, but uh, that's pure alizarin crimson in some of these shadow areas. Right out of the tube.
And some final touches on this uh, tree in the middle here. We finally make it look like a real tree. <laughs> Again, we don't want too much detail, just little suggestions here and there. Well, I think I'm gonna call this a done deal. A quick little signature. This painting is on watercolor paper that I have coated with acrylic gesso. I do this just because this is just a demo. In real time, it took about two hours. I think it needs just a little bit more shadow in the snow on the brush on the left. And so there it is. I'm Steve Rathburn, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.